Hey, what's up guys? We're going to look at Kirchhoff's second law. Just like his first law, this is a law which is incredibly useful to enable us to solve circuit problems. So Kirchhoff's second law states that in a closed loop, the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the PDs. It's really important that we understand this definition because it's key to being able to solve the problems. So let's have a look at it in a little bit more detail. What is an EMF? An EMF is defined as the energy transferred per unit charge from other forms to electrical energy. And this comes from the equation V is equal to W over Q. So an EMF supply is something like a cell or a generator. They transfer energy to the electrons from other forms, such as from kinetic or from chemical. These electrons then flow around the circuit. I've drawn the conventional flow here, going from positive to negative. When these electrons, they're carrying this electrical energy, but when they reach a component such as a resistor, they have to lose their electrical energy. And in a resistor, they transfer energy from electrical energy to say thermal energy in this resistor. If it was a light bulb, it'd be transferred to thermal and to light energy. So across components, we get what is known as potential differences. And this is the energy transferred per unit charge from electrical energy two other forms of energy. And what Kirchhoff's law states is that the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the PDs in a loop. And it's really important that we understand this fact that it's within a loop because when we analyze parallel circuits, there's many loops. So in our simple circuit here, we've got a single source of EMF. So we can say that the EMF is equal to the sum of these potential differences across the resistors. So it's equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. And because we're looking at energy, we're conserving energy. This is a conservation of energy. And that's really important because in everything in physics, energy is always conserved. We can't create or destroy it. EMFs supply the circuit with electrical energy from other forms and potential differences across components is where energy is transferred from electrical to other forms. But the total amount of energy in is equal to the energy that leaves the circuit because we always have to conserve energy. So let's have a look at some simple circuits and apply Kirchhoff's second law. So his second law states the sum of EMFs is equal to the sum of PDs in a loop. We're going to start off with series circuits with identical resistances. So we've got an EMF of 15 volts and we've got a single resistor. Therefore, the sum of PDs must equal the EMFs. So this must be equal to 15 volts, the potential difference across there. If we now add a second resistor, these two resistors are going to share the potential difference and the sum of it has got to equal 15. So this one must get 7.5 volts and this one must have a potential difference across it of 7.5 volts. If we now have three resistors, we have three potential differences and that's got to equal 15. And because they're all identical, we get five volts across each. So if you've got series circuits that are all identical resistances, it's really easy. You just share the potential differences out amongst the different resistors. Now let's have a look at parallel circuits. And this is where the loop part of the law is important. The sum of EMS is equal to the sum of potential differences within a loop. And we're going to look at each loop in turn. So with this basic one loop circuit, we've seen that if the EMF is 15, the potential differences have to add to 15 in that single loop. In our second one, we've now got two loops, one and two. So in each of these loops, the sum of the EMF has to equal the sum of the PDs. So this one has to have 15 volts. And then if we ignore the first loop and just look at the second loop, this second resistor must also get 15 volts for its potential difference to equal the EMF. And if you keep adding loops in to your parallel circuit, then we just keep repeating it. In the first loop, we have 15 volts. In the second one, we get 15 volts. And in the third one, we have 15 volts potential difference because in each loop, the sum of the EMFs has to equal the sum of the potential differences. Now let's combine series and parallel circuits and we're still looking at identical resistances. And it's really important we keep looking at each loop in turn. So in circuit A, we've got two loops here, loop one and loop two. So in the first loop, 
We've got EMF is 18, so the potential difference is, has got to be 18. And we've only got one resistor, so it gets the full 18 volts. In the second loop, we've got two identical resistances, so they each get 9 volts, because the sum of those two PDs is equal to 18. And we repeat the process in our second one in B. We've got 18 volts EMF. If we split that between three resistors, we get 6 volts each. But then we look at the second loop. We've only got two resistors, so they each get nine volts. And we can repeat the process for circuit C. We've got three loops though this time. So in the first loop, each is going to get nine volts for them to equal 18. The second one, there's only one resistor, so it gets the full share of the potential difference, 18 volts. And in the third one, each of them gets six volts because we have three resistors and those PDs have got to equal the EMF for that loop. In reality though, we don't often have identical resistors in a circuit. We often have non-identical resistances where the resistances are different. But we always need to remember that V is equal to IR. The potential difference is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance. That means that the potential difference is proportional to the resistance. So if you have a greater resistance, you will have a greater share of the potential difference. But Kirchhoff's second law still applies. The sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the potential differences within a loop. So in each of these, the resistors are different in terms of their actual value of their resistance. But in this first one, in A, we've got 10 volt EMF. Therefore, we must have 10 volts of potential difference. We've got four volts across R1. Therefore, R2 must get six volts. R2 must have a greater value of resistance compared to R1 because it's getting a greater share of the potential difference. In B, we've got 200 volts EMF. Therefore, we must have 200 volts PD. We've got 50 plus 125 is 175. Therefore, to make these potential differences add up to 200, we need another 25 volts. Now we've got some parallel circuits. We've got 70 volts of EMF in circuit C. So we look at each loop in turn. So in loop one, the PDs have got to be 70. That one there before we must be 70. In loop two, these two must add up to 70. We've already got 40, so this one only gets 30 volts. And we can keep doing this for any circuit that we have. 100 volts here. We've got 70 plus 20 is 90. Therefore, this one only gets 10 volts. It must have the lowest resistance out of those three resistors. R4 gets 45, but in this second loop, so we've got two loops in this circuit, the EMF is still 100, therefore the potential differences must be 100, so this has to be 55 volts. This final one, circuit E, we've got one, two, three loops, and we've all got different resistances. 12 volts is our EMF, so 9 plus 3 volts is 12. In the second loop, we must get 12 volts, because there's only one resistor. And we've got 4 volts plus 3 volts is 7 volts, so R4 must be 5 volts. It's really easy. We're just applying Kirchhoff's second law. So, in summary, really important to remember the definition. It is key. In a closed loop, the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the potential differences. We can write that mathematically using this Greek letter sigma. So the sum of the EMFs is equal to the sum of the PDs in a loop. And this is all to do with conservation of energy. The energy transferred into the circuit is equal to the energy transferred out of the circuit by components. You have to consider whether you have series circuits, parallel circuits, series and parallel, whether you have identical resistances or whether you have different resistances. But at all times we apply this law and you look at each loop in turn. That's it. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.